Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Secret Life of Seamstress and I'm Sally. So for today's video I thought I would record a little sew along. Um, I have a project to make for my next Minerva Craft blog um, and if you remember from my recent fabric haul video I showed you this really lovely uh, kind of bright yellow and black floral um, silky polyester I think it is. I still need to check the um, actual like composition of this fabric I'm not quite sure what it actually is but it's very very silky and drapey you can see um, I wasn't quite sure what to do with it but I've decided that I'm going to go for an Ogden cami hack um, so I thought I would film it to share with you guys just to let you know how I'm going to do it um, it's a little bit of a mashup of quite a few of my favorite patterns so I'm going for the um, Ogden cami bodice I'm sure you've all seen the Ogden Cami and probably made a few. Um, I've got three or four in my wardrobe and I've just shortened that and I'm going to attach the skirt of my beloved Sudley dress pattern um, which I've lengthened. So what I've done is I've used the um, Ogden Cami bodice pattern which you can see here. Um, I've got the PDF version so that's all printed out and I've cut it, or I've folded it all up very badly, <laughs> um, up to the lengthen and shorten line, um, which should give me a kind of raised bodice. I measured on this top I'm actually wearing here just to see where I wanted the waist to fall. And um, it actually turned out to be pretty much uh, where the lengthen and shorten line is on the pattern. So I literally just folded that up to give it more of a like baby doll type uh, smock style dress. Um, so I've done that on the back and front and um, that's my bodice and then I've cut out the skirt of the Sudley pattern and I've added on 12 centimetres to the length just to give it more of a midi kind of look. So I've also borrowed the ties from the Sudley dress pattern which are normally used for the neckties and I've cut those on the fold of the fabric to give me some really long ties which will hopefully go around um, the back and come and tie at the front because I really like that look. So that is my plan. Um, Just to say, I've got my pieces cut out already, um, but this fabric was very difficult to cut. <laughs> it's super, super slippy. So I was holding on to it for dear life. Um, it was slipping around on the table. I cut it out with a rotary cutter. Um, and because when you're trying to cut on the dining table, it's kind of all falling off everywhere. I just put stuff all over it to hold it in place while I cut out and I used my pattern weights and my rotary cutter and my cutting board to cut out. But it was a bit of a task because it's very slippy. It's really lovely and soft and silky but yeah to cut out it was quite hard. Um, so I did record myself cutting out my pieces. They're already cut out so I'll just pop a bit of footage in a bit later on so hopefully you can see a little bit of me struggling to cut this out. Um, so yeah I think I'm all ready to go. Just to say, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love you to subscribe. Um, I post lots of sewing videos, lots of sewing content, fabric hauls, sew alongs like this, and um, I talk about what I've made and things like that. So that's that out of the way. Uh, just to say as well, if you're interested in what I'm wearing, this is my, my blouse hack of the Darling Ranges pattern, which I made earlier in the summer from a beautiful Atelier Brunette double gauze fabric. Um, and I've just used the bodice of the pattern and attached a little peplum style skirt. And if you want to hear more about this blouse, I'll link the video that I talk about it more down below. Okay. So I'm gonna make a cup of tea and then I'm gonna get started sewing.
Right, so made my cup of tea, um, ready to go, set up the machines, being yeah. lazy with my thread today, I'm keeping white thread in my machine and on my overlocker, um, just because I'm running out of black thread for my overlocker, so I don't really want to change it, and this fabric does have a bit of white in it, so I'm thinking that white should probably be okay. So first up in the Ogden Cami, loads of boring stay stitching. So I need to stay stitch the um, neck edge and the arm holes of the linings and the um, main pieces. And just to say that I am fully lining the top, but when it comes to the skirt, I haven't, I didn't have enough fabric to line the skirt. Um, the fabric is see-through, so I'm gonna have to wear some kind of slip or something underneath it, which is fine because I do normally wear a slip under dress anyway, so I just hope that that's gonna work okay. I've tested the machine on the fabric and it's not too bad actually. I changed my machine needle to a new 70 um, needle. I was gonna use a 60, but I didn't have one and 70 seems to work okay. So I'm gonna start sewing. I've done my stay stitching and I've just stitched together the little straps for the cami um, and I need to turn them through now and um, if you have followed me for a little while you'll know how much I hate turning these things through. Um, these ones aren't actually too bad or I've found in the past that they aren't too bad because they're little so they don't take too much turning but I've made those huge waist ties <laughs> and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to turn those through yet. Um, I know lots of people have recommended to me the prim tool which is kind of like a drinking straw that you poke through and then you push it through um, the other end so I'm going to have to get one of those um, or actually I could try it with my one of my kids drinking straws maybe might try that in a minute anyway yeah that's where I'm at now I'm going to just turn these little straps through um, just to let you know, I always do my straps about an inch smaller than they are on the pattern just because I'm quite small and I find the Ogden cami quite low cut. So just by shortening the straps slightly, it just brings the top up um, so that it's not quite as sort of low in the bust, I guess. Um, so that's where I'm at now. So I'm going to just turn my straps through and iron them and um, on to the next part. Pleased to report that my straps have turned through no problem. <laughs> wasn't too bad. At the moment I'm using this funny um, prim turning thing with a little hook at the end that you just clip through. You can see mine's all bent because I caught it in the bottom of my sewing box when I was putting it away once. It wasn't in properly and I just closed it all up and it bent the end. Um, but at the moment it's still working okay but I do want to get one of those kind of straw things for turning through um, bigger straps because um, they look really good and I hate turning little straps through. It's one of my pet hates for sewing. So now I'm just going to sew the side seams of the main bodice and the lining. And I'm going to pin this a lot because it's very slippy. Um, I just had to open the back drawer because it's got really hot. It's that funny kind of September weather where you don't really know if it's hot or cold and sending the kids into school. I kind of send them in in the morning with um, coats and jackets and things. And then when they come out, they just want to strip everything off. So I end up carrying a load of um, clothes home that <laughs> they've shared throughout the day. By the way, um, I've only just recently got one of these magnetic pin dishes and it is a game changer because I am always, always throwing, well not throwing but dropping pins all over the floor and I don't know how my kids or the dog haven't actually trodden on any pins yet um, but now after I've finished sewing I just hover this over the floor and it collects all the pins up. Um, it's just one of those things, I know everyone else in the world probably has one but um, I got it for my birthday and um, absolutely love it. Right, so I'll sew these seams now. Okay, 
Even though this is going to be fully lined, I'm going to overlock these seams as well because this fabric's really fraying. So just to give it a longer lease of life, I'm going to um, overlock all the seams of the main part of the bodice and the lining um, because you can kind of see there how the threads are coming away just from sort of being handled. So it's very delicate. So I'm definitely going to do a lot of overlocking on this. Really tempting not to pin it all, but I know I will regret it if I don't. really hard on this pattern to tell when you're working with it what's the front and what's the back. Um, the front of the Ogden cami is slightly higher than the back so um, that's how I always tell but I need to, it would probably be helpful to mark them rather than having to keep holding them up against each other all the while. See which piece is which. So now what I'm doing is pinning all around the bodice pieces um, and the armholes just to sew them together and slippy slippy loads of pins making sure i pin really well this fabric's really pretty the more i handle it the more i think i really like it actually definitely not colors i would normally go for but i find with minerva fabrics for some reason i seem to go for really bright colors like that orange fabric that i made the eve dress up not really something i would normally go for same with this Definitely not something I would normally go for, but I actually really like it. tip if you need one um, when you're threading up your straps on the Ogden cami into the from the front to the back um, armhole I find it easier to put a pin a safety pin on the end of the strap um, and then it's much easier to poke it through the hole so that's what I'm doing now so I'll just poke that through up there up there <laughs> through the um, back little section you just have to make sure that you don't twist the straps at all so I'm just feeling underneath and then I'll just pin the end of it through my safety pin on the board. I use my magnetic dish in a minute to pick that up. <laughs> right, just check that that's gone through okay. Then you can just double check that your straps have gone through okay and they're not twisted. And then you just serve it across. So normally if you're making an Ogden cami, you'd have like a lining piece that was shorter than the main piece um, but because I'm just doing a bodice, a free line bodice, I'm um, mine are both the same length that I'm going to pin them together and then just attempt to overlock them together so that they're a bit more stable for when I come to put the skirt on um, and then effectively I'm just kind of handling them as one piece rather than a lining and a top. Just hope that they overlock together okay to pin it quite well. This fabric's definitely handling it better than I thought it would actually. I thought it was going to be a bit of a nightmare but it's actually quite nice to say. Uh, pressing it I'm actually I'm putting a tea towel over it rather than just putting the iron straight on it because I did test one piece and um, yeah the steam kind of shrunk it a bit so just something to bear in mind. So you can just about see that I've got a very, very short little cami top <laughs> um, and I've overlocked the bottom there so that it's just all in one piece now uh, ready to attach the skirt. But next I'm going to do my ties because I want to get those out of the way and done um, and somehow attach them into the skirt when I'm attaching the side, side seams. So I'm going to do those now. Is anyone else really bad at just not wanting to stop and eat when you're sewing? Um, I could have quite happily carried on then and not eaten or drank anything um, I just want to carry on once I start I'm terrible at stopping um, I just I need to be better at like doing things in sections rather than always rushing to get things done but I just hate leaving things unfinished I just want to carry on um, anyway I had a cheese and pickle sandwich if anyone's interested 
and bag crisps and an apple. <laughs> so what I did um, just before lunch was I sewed together my skirt side seams. Here's the gigantic skirt. Um, so I've sewed that at the side seams and I've overlocked the top just so that I, when I come together it, it's a little bit easier and it doesn't fray too much. Um, and I've also done my ties these really really long skinny little ties which I managed to turn through with my prim uh, turny thing again. They worked really well, it's much better that one for like really thin loops I think. Um, yeah so that wasn't too bad so I was going to attach these into the skirt but then while I was making them I thought perhaps I wouldn't attach them into the skirt and I'd just have them as a belt so that when the dress is done I can either have it loose or um, or use the belt to kind of cinch it in at the waist so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm going to somehow sew my two ties together to make a really long belt um, and then I'm just going to gather the top of this skirt and attach it to the bodice and then when I've done that I'll try it on and show you what it looks like. So I've just come up to my favourite place, the bathroom ensuite bathroom mirror to try it on and I really really like it. Um, I hope I don't sound too surprised. I'm not surprised really. I was kind of imagining it to look like this in my head, but then as I was sewing, I thought, I hope it does turn out how I'm thinking. So this is my, if I come closer to the mirror, you can see um, the little tie belt here. So this isn't attached. I've literally just wrapped it round. Um, you can see the lovely print of the fabric, how silky it is. I really like this black and yellow together. And, um, if I go back and take the tie off, it's really long. And you could have it as just like a loose fit in summer dress. So I'm really glad that I didn't actually sew the ties in now because um, we can have it either way now. Um, it's not overly loose actually, um, but I think just with a little belt tie just gives it a little bit more of a kind of wasted look so I'm really really pleased with that I still need to hem it the hem is not that level actually so it needs a little bit of leveling out so I think I'm just going to try and do a little rolled hem because I really like the length that this is at the moment and yeah really like it so I'm just going to take it off do the hem and then I will finish up the video so here is the finished product, um, sitting proudly on Lady McElroy, clashing a little bit with her purple spotty body. Um, but I'm really, really pleased with this dress. I'm so glad that I decided to make that pattern um, with this fabric because I think it works really well with the drape of this fabric and the gathers of the dress and everything. It's just turned out really nicely. Um, yeah, and just a few points to note for the fabric, I suppose it's fine to sew. Just take your time, um, I'd say overlock absolutely everything you can because it's very fray -y. Um, but if you do that uh, it was absolutely fine to work with, it sewed fine on my machine uh, with a 70 point needle as I say and um, yeah and it overlocked fine as well. So with the hem I just literally overlocked the bottom of the hem and then I turned over a really narrow hem. Um, I have got a rolled hem foot on my machine but I can't use it very well. <laughs> I don't know why, I just haven't got the hang of using it yet and sometimes it doesn't, it kind of stops rolling so I just wanted to make sure that I hemmed it properly. That's the route I decided to go down. Um, yeah and with a pattern hack I'd say just measure your bodice. This is, I thought this was going to turn out quite high, this um, the uh, cami part of the dress but actually it is, on the, it is a high waist. Um, where I've cut it but I prefer that in this kind of dress obviously if you wanted it longer then just extend the bodice down a little bit to make it a bit lower on the waist um, but yeah I think it's fine and I kind of guessed the length really so I just added 12 centimeters onto the Sudley um, dress pattern piece obviously you could use any kind of skirt pattern really and just attach it to the Ogden cami top um, or you can just draft your own rectangular skirt pattern piece but yeah the Sudney pattern worked absolutely fine so I'm so pleased with that um, I hope you can't see all the mess behind me I need to clear up now before I go to school pick up um, and I'm just going to quickly try and get a couple of photos of the dress so that I can pop them in at the end of this video 
So thank you so much for watching. I'm really enjoying making style long videos at the moment. So let me know if you're enjoying them too. Um, so yeah, enjoy your day, whatever you're doing. I'd love you to subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell. Leave me a comment if you like. Um, and yeah, enjoy your day and I'll see you soon. Bye.